If your database system supports now a business, could it maintain the same level of quality if the business grows 10 times larger? For example, let's say that a database can store 1 gigabyte of data and effectively process 100 queries per second. Now, the business expands and the amount of data being processed grows 100 times. Will the database be able to support 10,000 queries per second and process 100 gigabytes of data? Normally, the answer comes from scalable solutions. The database should be ready to be expanded so that it's able to handle the load as soon as it's necessary. We could scale vertically, that is, increase the resources on a single machine, but this has its limits, or we could scale horizontally using more machines, basically, we utilize the power of multiple computers. However, horizontal scalability comes together with the difficulties of distributed architecture. There are some solutions that do this. In fact, many NoSQL databases are distributed systems. One of the most spectacular examples of scalable solution is Cassandra. For example, there are clusters of tens of thousands of nodes operating petabytes of data and performing hundreds of millions of operations per day. This could never be possible with a single server. On the other hand, these kind of systems are less flexible in functionality. For example, they don't provide easy searching, but more importantly, they don't provide consistency in the sense of the ACID principles. PostgreSQL, by contrast, is a relational database management system that supports high concurrent isolated transactions and integrity constraint. We'll see later some use cases. However, all this is normally on a single machine. Now, the question is, can we have the integrity constraint of PostgreSQL and the scalability of Cassandra? Basically no, but there are a couple of distinctions to be made. Actually, there is a theorem in computer science that was formulated by Eric Brewer in 2000 called the CAP theorem. He stated that a distributed data storage can support only two of the following three features at the same time. We'll start off with partition tolerance. We'll consider that a system is partitioned in two instances. In this case, even if some parts of the systems are not available, the system should survive. Then we have consistency. In this case, any read operation always returns the most current state of the data, regardless of which node was queried. And availability, in this case, any request to the system is always successful. Now, let's consider that one of the nodes fails, or maybe the network between the nodes is broken. In this case, the two nodes can't tell if the other one is alive or not. In both cases, we can only choose either consistency or availability. If we choose consistency, then we can't do an update. For instance, if we try to update just one node, this will lead to an inconsistency. So, in this case, the system is considered unavailable. On the other hand, if we choose availability, we'll end up with a system where the nodes have different values. Normally, Cassandra provides availability and partition tolerance. It is possible that a read operation performed on one node doesn't see the data written in another node until the data is replicated to all the nodes that are supposed to have it. This will not block the read operation. Also, read and write operations are always successful. If a node breaks, it doesn't break the whole database. When the broken node is returned to the cluster, it receives the missing changes in the data automatically. Yes, we can configure Cassandra and we can increase the consistency level in order to make it absolutely consistent, but in this case, it will not be partition tolerant anymore. We can't allow a partition to fail because otherwise we won't be able to complete a request. Relational databases that comply with the ACID principles are consistent and available, but they are not normally separated in partitions. 
Once a session commits a transaction, all other sessions can immediately see the results. Intermediate states of data are not even visible. Then, when the database is running, all the queries will succeed if they are correct. Normally, if we make a part of the data unavailable, the database will stop working. Strictly speaking, standard PostgreSQL is not a distributed system. But there are tens of solutions to scale PostgreSQL, each with its benefits and limitations. For example, we can choose to scale only the reads or only the writes based on our requirements. This is why it is important to ask the right questions before we dive into the distributed systems. So, what should we choose? Let's take some common examples and use cases. For instance, for banking operations, consistency is required. If money is transferred from one account to another, we expect that either both accounts' balances are updated or none. In this example, we have to make two update operations. It is required that both operations are executed successfully or none. We call this a transaction. If the application fails, after it has updated one of the accounts, the whole transaction will be cancelled and the data will return to the previous consistent state. Availability of the data is also important. However, if an online banking system is not available for a while because they need to restore a database from a backup, then the customers can tolerate the inconvenience because they don't want to lose their money. So, in this case, consistency is extremely important. Partial availability has a lower priority. On the other hand, if someone likes a picture on Instagram, the system tracks this action in the context of the picture and also in the context of the user who likes it. If any of these two operations fails, the data will not be consistent, but this is not critical. This doesn't mean that the data Instagram operates is less valuable. It's just that the requirements are different. There are millions of users and probably billions of pictures and nobody wants to wait when using the service. If likes are not displayed correctly, it doesn't matter too much. But if the whole system is not available for some time, users may decide to leave. This means different solutions for different business requirements. Unfortunately, there is a natural limitation that makes it impossible to achieve everything at once. 